Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Well today I want to discuss an article that appeared in one of the largest circulation newspapers in the UK last week and I think it's worse mainly because of its absurdity. Now according to an article in the British newspaper the Daily Mail, London will cease to exist on Monday the 20th of January 2025. Now, the time is very precise. 7.30 London time, Russia will issue the order to a new issue and look at strike at 8.08am. The first waterheads will detonate in Trafalgar Square. Now, this scenario is described in very de serious detail in the British Conservative newspaper, The Daily Mail. We've undertaken a detailed study of the potential consequences of a nuclear strike on London. Now, why they chose Trafalgar Square rather than the British Parliament building down the street, I don't know. Also, they don't specify the reason behind the attack. After all, it's not as if Russia takes perfidious Albion, the US's yapping, snapping lapdog, and its current leadership seriously, regarded them as a com group of complete clowns led by Sir Wan Kiev Starmer, with all the personality of a potted plant and all the charm of a Scunthorpe abattoir. Now, the decision to bomb the capital of the United Kingdom was taken by Russia on this date, according to the report. So now he was meticulously laid out in its timeline and its detail, even stating that the missile will hit at 11, landing on Trafalgar Square. Meanwhile, in the Ministry of Defence bunker, they'll be opening their first bottle of malt whiskey. This indicates the government bunkers are equipped with whiskey reserves. It's worth reading the article, which I put up here, because it's so laughable. Furthermore, the report goes on to provide a detailed account of the horror and suffering that will be endured by hundreds of thousands of people who will not survive the radiation poisoning, not to mention the initial impact. Now, the scenario concludes on Monday the 13th, 3rd of uh, February, two weeks later, where the British Army are sent into the ruins to ascertain if any survivors remain. Now, the scenario concludes on a somewhat poetic note. This great city founded by the Romans two millennia ago has now become a stark reminder of the darkest day in human history. Now, do bear in mind, this article did not appear on April the 1st, and it's not meant to be humorous. Well, apart from my perspective, their article probably was. Now, well, no, I don't think they did actually. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who does donate gets a personal thank you from me. Now, those of you of a certain age will know there's nothing new in this apocalyptic scenario. There's been a great deal of interest in this topic, as evidenced by the numerous films and books that have been produced over this on the subject over the past few decades, particularly in the 60s and the 70s. In fact, it actually goes back to the 1950s with Neville shooting on the beach. In fact, I remember in school in the 1970s watching a government film called Three Minute Warning, how you were supposed to hide under the kitchen table and you would be safe from a nuclear impact. Now, the prospect of a Soviet atomic bomb has caused concern for Western citizens for more than two generations. I mean, more, probably more like three, as affairs were ramped up again and again. Now what the Daily Mail offers up now is more of the same laughable propaganda they kept on trying on in the Cold War. However, this theme continues to appear in other publications all the way across Europe and indeed in the USA, and it does indicate a certain trend. Now it's notable that over the last two and a half years the Western press has avoided discussing the possibility of a nuclear apocalypse particularly in the context of the ongoing situation in the Ukraine. Conversely, the general public were being indoctrinated to believe that a nuclear war was not as catastrophic as might as previously been thought. And all the horror stories about a nuclear war were a successful propaganda campaign put out by the Soviets in the 1980s. Well, actually, it was earlier. It was the 1970s. However, the majority of Western media outlets have still concentrated their efforts on reassuring the public that a nuclear war is not a viable option. 
The media landscape was awash with betting headlines. It's why there will be no nuclear war. I mean, the most frequently used term by analysts in response to the regular warnings about the risk to humanity was Russia's bluffing. The public was informed that why the West should not be concerned about Russia having nuclear weapons and its threats. These statements were particularly pre prevalent earlier this year. I mean, subsequently, the Deputy Secretary of State of uh, NATO, who you've never heard of, Mercia Genoa, uh, asserted that Russia's nuclear rhetoric was merely a means of exerting psychological pressure on the West. Now, the former U.S. congressman and a man who's prone to crying like a baby on live TV, Adam Kissinger, and the retired G U.S. General Ben Hodges published a joint article in the Washington Post called Time to Call Putin's Bluff, or maybe it was the Atlantic, I can't remember. They are neocons, are so hilarious, and none of anything they've asserted over the years has happened, and as NATO move on from one disaster to another. I mean, this continued all through the summer up until September. For instance, a so-called military expert recently provided reassurance to the German public in an article published in a Tashbegel newspaper. He said, the likelihood of Russia initiating an attack on NATO a member state is estimated to be 0.0001 percent. Yeah, the Ukraine, usually attempts to uh, persuade the West that Russia would not hesitate to use nuclear weapons, although uh, nobody takes that rationale seriously, with the Kiev cokehead obviously <laughs> going off on one. The rationale behind this campaign is to note the general public have been informed that the objective of the West is to defeat Russia on the battlefield. Consequently, any cautions regarding a nuclear strike by Russia and in general appeals for peace were regarded as an operation of the Russian propaganda machine. They say that Russia's threat to use nuclear weapons was just to uh, paralyze the Western media. The recent speculation regarding Russia's potential for defeat on the battlefield has now actually disappeared. Conversely, an increasing number of articles have been published which conclude that it's not actually going to lose. In fact, it's winning. Plus, there's a plethora of statements that have engaged in concerning the reality and perils of nuclear warfare threat. And the German newspaper Bild cites the opinion of a retired general, they're always retired, aren't they? He was previously a military advisor for the German Chancellor on the reality of a nuclear war in Europe. The German newspaper Zeit has published a comprehensive article examining the potential consequences of a global nuclear war, highlighting that humanity completely could be annihilated within the three hours. Well, we've known that since God knows when. The European Commission has published a 165-page report on security threats with a primary focus on a potential conflict with Russia. 14 divisions of sanctions, and that's what they come out with. Plus, the more, they advise Europeans to more have a three-day supply of food and medicine in case of war. Why only three days? I mean, but who understands EU directives? Because there's no change in the approach. The West continues to pursue a policy of Russophobia, stroking fears and fostering hatred towards Russia. However, it would appear that Russophobia has two sides. One side of this is it presents the promises of an expedient and decisive victory over Russia, over Moscow and Russia. However, that's pretty much gone. Conversely, the other side entails the acknowledgement of a global catastrophe and the potential destruction of London in a matter of hours in the event of war. So it may be worth considering the other side. It provides a reality check for many and has acted as a deterrent for those who might be tempted to cross a dangerous line. Russia isn't bluffing. Russia never bluffs. For example, some Western analysts believe that the fear of a nuclear winter whipped up by the Soviet Union helped avoid the catastrophe, well, I think that's probably right. Plus, the current apoplectic publications in newspapers, which can be classified as Russian propaganda, it's unlikely that you'd call Bill or the Daily Mail uh, Russian propaganda, are encouraging individuals to the West to adopt a more measured approach. I mean, only the other day, Dmitry Medvedev, 
Medvedev, the deputy chairman of the Russian Security Council and former president, highlighted the potential risk associated with the assumption that Russians will never cross a certain line when it comes to dealing with uh, defending the Russian state. So the shift from the discourse on Russia's defeat on the battlefield to the speculation about the destruction of Russia of London on 20th of January is somewhat paradoxical and that represents a promising indication that might assist some in the West in avoiding this perilous step. And I tell you again, this is not made on April the 1st. Now, thanks for watching. Please like and share, plus uh, and subscribe. If you want to help me out, press the thanks button at the bottom of the screen and make a small donation. Don't forget to comment. Love your comments, love reading them and love responding to them. See you all again soon. Thank you.